in treating um, chronically ill patients with functional medicine for more than 10 years, he's discovered that um, glutathione deficiency is um, in almost all long-term chronic illness. So if we would just learn how to wow. boost glutathione, it can really make people go into remission of symptoms of a lot of disease. Joining the pilgrimage, I am eager for this conversation today with Leah Parker. She is a registered nurse and naturopath doctor and has so much wisdom that I know will not only impact your life and my life, but um, the people that you know who are around you who may be struggling with sickness, with autoimmune conditions, and have no idea where to start. Leah, you have an incredible journey and story. And I just want to thank you for coming on here today. Thank you so much for having me, Chelsea. So just to get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you entered into this journey? So you went to school, you became a registered nurse, and then you had your daughter, and then things quickly changed after that. Tell us a little bit about what happened. Well, I graduated from registered nursing school from the University of Arkansas at Monticello in 1991, and I was 20 years old. I thought I knew a lot, and I, I did know, but I only had one version, and allopathic medicine is not the same as naturopathic medicine. And I only had that one understanding. And so I was going at this with the best understanding that I had. And we had some issues with my daughter who was ADHD. She was building antibodies to every food that she ate. And we had taken her to a specialist in our area. And he said, yes, she's building antibodies to every food that she eats, but we don't know why. And here's a prescription for prednisone mm -hmm. and albuterol and hope things go well. This might work. And that's all that I got. And I left that appointment disillusioned, confused, frightened, yeah. not knowing what to do. And on the way home, I remembered my grandmother leaving a doctor's appointment like that one time. And she had some issues and she said, I remembered that God was the big doctor in the sky and I just turned it over to him on the way home. Mm -hmm. She lived to be 92. She was a smart lady. Um, wow. So I remembered that. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, I need your help. I need answers. And so I went home and it was actually the first time that I had ever fasted and prayed and asked God to help me. And mm -hmm. um, he showed up with mm -hmm. answers and so I started learning more about nutrition and certain mm -hmm. detoxing protocols that could help the body. And Heavenly Father just took me on a long journey of learning that is that I'm still on. Yeah. That have defied all of the allopathic protocols and um, right. prognoses for my daughter. She is 27 years old and she, they said, well, she's probably won't graduate from uh, any type of extra learning. Yeah. She's got these developmental issues and she is ADHD and she's probably always going to have these issues. She also had female issues. They said she would never have a child. She is an esthetician now and she has a little boy that just mm -hmm. turned four. So don't give up. God has answers when it seems so bleak that you can't find any. And I understand looking wow. for answers it, with women typically are the ones that are shouldered with the burden mm -hmm. of taking care of the health of the family. They just, we intuitively know yeah. when something isn't right with our body or our children's bodies or our husband's bodies. Men have more of this yeah. well it's it's not that big of a deal it'll go away and i just don't want to deal with things <laughs> get better and and they don't want to admit there's an issue or to try and look for help but some do it's just mainly the women that are ones left shouldering the burden so i understand how difficult it can be when you have all of these voices and you know one day eggs are great the next day they're terrible um you know organic sugar's good, then 
no sugar. It's confusing. There's a lot of information out there. And so being a registered nurse and then having Heavenly Father lead me to go back to school to become a naturopath, I had a bit of, I wouldn't call it a conversion, but more of a convergence of both of these two understandings. I'm not saying that there's not a place for allopathic medicine. I just think that we use and we lean on allopathic medicine as a crutch instead of getting an understanding of why we are struggling with the issues we have. Well, I love to that. Exactly. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you started with an inspiring story that, you know, there is hope no matter where you're at in your journey, you know, whether whatever prognosis a doctor has told you, you know, there is always hope. And so, you know, we were talking before this about some of those environmental factors that maybe we don't even realize, um, you know, that we're putting in our bodies that are impacting our health. And, um, you know, I shared with you that I was diagnosed with Epstein-Barr and went on a journey of just like paying on, not like super in depth, like wild, but just paying more attention to what, you know, my, what the products I was using to wash my hair and making sure that, you know, there wasn't all these chemicals in it and, you know, what was in my food and getting rid of all the hydrogenated oils and all, just like all of these things. And over time, I just start, stopped experiencing these symptoms of Epstein-Barr. And, you know, what you told me was so encouraging, which was, you know, that you were able to eliminate a enough of the toxins from your body that your body was able to do what it was created to do. So um, kind of tell us a little bit about that. You know, what are these environmental factors around us that can lead to these health issues? And how do we detox our body, you know, once we realize these things are in our life? Well, first I would say make sure that you are under the care of a good doctor that understands that, like a functional medicine practitioner or yeah. a naturopath or someone with an understanding. Because when you're taking medications, you need to be careful with any type of detox. Mm -hmm. But if you're healthy enough, and this is just general yeah. information for you to take to your doctor and be under a nutritionist if you have one to help you. But when we are inundating sure. our bodies with um, preservatives in food, pesticides, di food dyes, um, heavy metals in things mm -hmm. that like our dentistry and things like that, the, the old mercury type fillings that we used to use. Um, all of these things are collecting in our bodies. And we now learned mm -hmm. about 15 to 20 years ago, they learned that of this methylation cycle in the body and what it is it's a biochemical process and it's a key cellular pathway in our body and it detoxes it, it is mm -hmm. responsible for multiple things but we'll talk about detox right now um what it does is it it, this biochemical process that is going on in the body our bodies break down b12 and um, folate and it goes through this process to produce glutathione and glutathione is our body's chief antioxidant mm -hmm. it goes through the body and it has a sticky smelly sulfur molecule on one side it's sticking to pesticides dyes preservatives heavy metals toxins cancer cells and and precancerous cells and removing them from the body. So it's very important to boost glutathione. Um, the other side of the molecule of glutathione is recycling our vitamins to keep them around so that our bodies can utilize the vitamins. There's an article online called Glutathione, the mother of all antioxidants. It's out of the Huffington Post, and I'm not a great big Huff Post fan, mm -hmm. but this article is good and Dr. Mark Hyman wrote it. And if people would go and read that article, it would explain a lot about glutathione and the importance of boosting it. He tells you that in treating um, chronically ill patients with functional medicine for more than 10 years, he's discovered that um, glutathione deficiency is on, in almost all long-term chronic illness. So if we would just learn how to wow. boost glutathione, it can really make people go into remission of symptoms of a lot of disease. And is this something 
people need to go to a doctor to like to get like blood work tested and get like that medicine or how do you go about that? Well, um, I, I like a product called Immunical because it has multiple clinical okay. trials. It's in the PDR and I've seen it work in my family and in others that I have yeah. treated over 10 years um, for multiple issues. I've also met, I went to Canada with a good friend of mine and went to um, Immunitech Corporation and talked with them and they did a three-year clinical trial for autism and had great results for that. But um, Immunical is a bioactive whey protein isolate that is double bonded mm -hmm. cysteine. And it is what you call a glutathione precursor. And the best way to boost glutathione is using glutathione precursors. Because if you, you can buy glutathione okay. pills at the health food store or online, but typically you're going to get about 1% of that if you take it because the acid in the stomach is going to destroy it. So I like to use the precursors to glutathione. And this is one that has lots of clinical trials to prove efficacy. Um, this one is actually patented for cancer wow. and anti-aging ladies. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I um, have seen, tremendous results. Now, if you buy it, it comes in a box and it has um, okay. 30 packages in there and you can buy it directly from the company. You can buy it online or you can buy it or you can get it through the pharmacy. You can get a prescription for it, but it's more expensive mm -hmm. if you buy it from the pharmacy because they're going to get their cut. So it's just best, in my opinion, sure. to either buy it online or buy it through the company. Now, if you do, um, you don't want to put it in a blender and blend it or and you don't want to put it in hot liquids because that destroys the bioavailability of the protein. So I prefer to just put it in okay. juice, stir it with a fork, leave it sitting for five minutes, come back, stir it again. Some a lot of people like to use the um, orange juice in a bottle with the um, Immunical. It's really important. Don't beat, don't heat. Yogurt, it blends beautifully in that. If you absolutely hate yogurt, juice is great. But you can start mm -hmm. out low and slow. I tell people, unless you have a chronic health issue, if you've got cancer, you know, cancer is something that you definitely want to be under the care of a physician that is knows how to make sure that you are doing the right things. Um, some people choose to do both. Mm -hmm. That's up to them. Um, I had a lady that chose to use the chemo and radiation and she took four packs of Immunical a day and she never vomited once from chemotherapy. Now she still had some wow. bad side effects from it, but I've also known people that just used Immunical and other natural substances and they, did well and don't have cancer, they're in remission. So everyone has to do what they want to right. do for themselves. But if it were me, I would be doing everything naturally up front now to try and prevent cancer yes. if I had that in my family. Um, if I knew that I had a, a stronger inability to detox. So um, if you have long term chronic illness in your family, you can go in and have a blood test done for to see if you're low in glutathione. But the best way to boost it is through precursors. Do you need to get tested to take it? Or like, what if, you're, if your levels are already normal and you take it? Is that, you know, is that still okay? Is there any sort of like side effects there? Well, with the Immunical, it is a medicinal food. It's a bioactive whey protein isolate. So you would need to make sure mm -hmm. that you don't have any milk protein allergies. They also would say, do okay. not take it unless your doctor tells you to if you've had a transplant because it is such a strong immune booster. And with transplant patients, they give you things to suppress your immune mm -hmm. system so it doesn't reject those organs. So those are pretty much the only two, yeah. you know, groups of people that can't take it sure. and it is a food. So your body, because you're taking okay. it in a precursor, if you ate a box of Immunical, you might gain weight. It's protein. 
So it, you need to increase fiber as well, but it's mm -hmm. not going to cause your body will not produce more glutathione than it needs. So, okay. It's not going to be like you can overdose on it or anything like that.